So let's jump in. This is a video on IAT Next. IAT Next is a library used for setting your apps up for multi-language support. I am going to show you with a setup of a React app on the front end and using the translations within the React app and also a variation where you can set up the translations to be loaded from another endpoint, a remote endpoint. Here is variation one on the left. It's going to have IAT Next included in a React app and all of the translations are going to be delivered to the client with the front end application and all the translations are going to happen on the front end application. For variation number two, it's going to be very similar, except that the front end application is going to be loading all of the translation data from a third party endpoint. This is better if you're going to have a huge app with loads and loads and loads of translations and you don't want all of that translation information to be loaded to the client when someone visits your site for the first time. So let's get started by creating a boilerplate React app. And then after we have the boilerplate React app, I'm going to add in IAT next and you'll get the gist of it. So here we are on the create React app website. If you come to this section and click adding TypeScript, you can generate the boilerplate app like so. I'm going to call this I18 next demo. And I'm using, I think, node version 14. I'm going to check after this is finished. As I suspected, node version 14, AKA LTS forward slash Fermium. Anyway, let's jump in. No, I don't trust them, but I must click this button. Here we have the boilerplate React app. Now let's layer on I18 next or I18N. I found this tutorial, which I will link in the description below that very succinctly describes how to integrate it. Pretty much you just have to install these packages, All right? Like that. When those are done installing, you create an i18n.ts, because I'm using TypeScript file with this content to initialize the i18n or i18 next module. All right, I did it already. Let me restart the app. Then you come to your entry point, make sure you initialize this module before you launch your React app. In your React app, this is how you do translations. So you use the use translation hook from the React I18 Next library. Then you initialize the hooks like so, right? And this should be enough to test this out. Load, there you go. Look at that. So our language is English with a US variation. And this is the key that we have established and we want to translate this. So inside of our module, you can see that we don't have any translations, right? So each dot is like a nested object, right? So greeting, hello, hello world. Look at that. All right, now let's add the translations for Spanish code for Spanish is ES, right? So we'll say, hola papi. So now look what happens when I switch my language. I already have my settings open over here. So English is the highest priority language. I'm gonna shift Spanish, right? To be the top priority language in my browser. Look at that, right? So it's that simple. So now for variation two, right? Like we were saying, well, first of all, let me say, forgive the audio. There is a tropical storm happening in the background. So anyways, variation number two, right? So we did variation number one. This is with all of the translations bundled in the front end application, right? We were able to switch between English and Spanish and you can extrapolate out that pattern to build a full app. But eventually if your app becomes enormous, right? Which is if you have the privilege to have an app that becomes that big, 
Eventually, you're going to want to move the translations off of the app, right, onto another server and load the translations as they're requested by the user. It doesn't make sense to load all of this translation data when most of it is not even going to get used by the client. Okay, so I'm going to describe what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to speed up the video so you don't die of boredom. I'm going to create a file server that's going to hold all the translations, and the front-end application is going to request the translations on the fly, on demand. Instead of all of the translations being loaded on the client, right? Let's say that you have like five languages, Russian, Japanese, Swedish, English, Hungarian. Why are you going to load all of those translations on the client? Most people aren't going to use all of that data, right? So it's much better design to have the user request the translations they need on the fly, right, from the server. So that's what we're going to do, right? That was a wise move to not have you sit through me setting up the file server, right? So here we have our folder. This is the overview. We're doing variation number two right now. Here's the front end that we set up, right? Create React app with TypeScript. And then this is the back end expressed with TypeScript. So here it is. You have the entry point. The back end is listening on port 4000. The front end has the dev server on port 3000. Inside of the server, we have this debug middleware and cores allowing requests from the front end on port 3000. And we have all of the translation data inside of the locales directory, right? So we have one translation for hello world in English and hello world in Spanish. And then we have a catch all middleware. So this is what we change on the front end to load the translations from the back end. So we installed this HTTP backend, and then we just tweaked the IAT next configuration like so. So we had all of the translations sitting on the front end. Now we are loading them from the back end like so, right? You want English and Spanish, and then we have to enable this like so. And in the front end, we switched our key from greeting.hello to the namespace translations and then the hello world key in the translations namespace, right? So translations is a namespace, as I mentioned. Namespaces allow you to group translations into different files, right? You can imagine as you get lots and lots of translations, it'd be nice to break them up into files. So you can have different groups of translations in each file and each file is referred to as a namespace in IAT next. So let me demonstrate. And then that will be it. So I'm running the back end. The front end is working. Or running rather. Right? Hello world. Why is that not going? Hello world. Hold on. What did we not do correctly? Translations. 18. That's right. We have to enable the namespaces, right? That's what I didn't do. There we go. Hello world. Right? And then if I switch my browser to have Spanish as the priority, right? We get our translations, right? So that's the gist of it, right? You can get much deeper with it. It's not too complicated, but there are some nuances to it. So that's how you use IAT Next 